Hi there everybody, it's Cassie, and this is now my fourth time recording this. A lot of things happened. Um, I will keep my original video in the description below. The audio quality is horrendous, so I do apologize for that, but that's the reason why I'm re-recording. So this is part one of my videos, and this is going to be talking about uh, mental health issues uh, online in general, but also in Second Life, um, as well as Second Life codependency. Uh, while I am a huge advocate for Second Life for many things, including physical and mental disabilities, for social anxiety, uh, emotional disabilities, uh, all different things, I feel like it's an amazing coping me mechanism, an amazing way to make friends. Um, I did also want to talk about other aspects. I did have a codependency on Second Life for a while, and I wanted to talk about how I coped and how I handled it and how I'm at a healthy um, stance with it now. Um, this video is going to be partnered with New World Notes again. Um, Hamlet All is amazing, and he's been the reason why I've come back to Second Life and vlogging. Well, Zero and Bree are the reasons why I mostly came back, and Jess, uh, but he's the reason why I came back for blogging and vlogging. Anyways, I'm getting in a tangent. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> okay, so let's get on and start talking. So um, I did want to talk about, uh, first off, mental awareness. And there's nothing wrong with having disabilities, having mental issues, physical issues at all. We're all unique. We're all beautiful. You guys are beautiful and wonderful all in your own ways. Um, but I do have mental disorders. I have PTSD, uh, cyclothymia, um, borderline personality disorder, but a very minimal one. It's mostly the depression, um, the self-hatred, and uh, the certain disassociation with certain topics. Um, I also have, um, I already said, I forgot what else I said. I have fibromyalgia. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, anxiety, depression. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> but um, I found a way to cope with it. And the biggest thing for me was taking a break from Second Life. I left in February of 2018, uh, the beginning of it, and I missed roleplay very much. So what I did when I didn't have roleplay was um, I made a roleplay server on Discord, and I had a lot of fun with that too. I still have it running, and uh, it's like a whole cool superhero roleplay. I love it. Um, but I also wanted to really work on my mental health. Um, I was diagnosed when I was 16, and then just last year, I also was diagnosed with the PTSD and the BPD, or Borderline Personality Disorder. And while it's something that's kind of hard to admit at times, like, I don't think any of us really like to admit that we ever have imperfections, especially in Second Life. This is the world where we get away from all the real-life interactions it's still good to talk about it and still good to try to figure out what we want to do with our lives. In February, I kind of just had this epiphany of what am I doing with my life? I would sit there every day for hours, blogging, vlogging, just standing around doing nothing. <laughs> or like I wasn't role playing anymore. I was hardly really focused on much. And I didn't leave for any negative reasons. I didn't leave because someone made me upset. I left for myself and it was something I really needed to do. And I apologize for not making a proper video about it in the past. I kind of just shot it out there when I did the Four Rose event. Um, but it was something I really wanted. And something I'm currently working on right now also is friendship. But I will talk about this more in my part two. For now, I want to stay on track and talk about different things, how to cope, what to do um, with Second Life. And one of the most important things is trying to rein in your emotions in Second Life. I feel like because it's a virtual world, because it's online, and it's only that emotional and social and mental connection, there's no physicality of it at all unless you one day meet them in real life as well. Um, it can be intense. It can be overwhelming and 
amazing. You fall in love quickly, you break up quickly. Um, it can be such a roller coaster. You can lose friendships or gain them so fast and feel like you have all the trust in the world and these people you meet across the planet. And there's still that veil of security uh, behind your keyboard, behind your monitor that you have where you just feel safer. You might not ever meet this person. You probably don't know everything about him. My best friend, I don't know his real name. I don't know where he lives. I just now learned his dog's name after being friends for about five years, <laughs> four years. It's been a long time. Um, it's It can be interesting. And I feel like it's important to kind of take a step back and figure out your dependency on Second Life, especially for social reasons. While it can be a good thing, you also want to try to monitor it and make sure you are still taking care of yourself in real life, you know? Uh, you don't ever want to be, um, where was I going with this? I got distracted by that notification. <laughs> you don't want to ever be in that space that you're neglecting making meals, cleaning your house, letting your your health deteriorate. I was getting to a point where I had a lot of body dysmorphia. Um, my heaviest weight was about 270 pounds. And this happened because of a medication I got on. I used to be super fit. Uh, and it just made me so lazy, and I never wanted to work out, even though I used to work out like 13 hours a day at this martial arts place. Um, and I gained weight, and I just started relying on Second Life. I could look however I wanted, I could be whoever I wanted, and I can enjoy myself. Right now I'm down to 254. I'm working out every single day. Um, and again, I'm going to talk about this more in my second video, but... I'm working on bettering myself, and I feel like that's an important thing I hope you do as well. I'm in no way a therapist, a counselor, a doctor, anyone that could give you truly health advice whatsoever. This is just my experiences and how I hope I can help you guys as well. There are uh, places online you can also get therapy. I know there's also a few places in Second Life that promote it as well, or counseling. Um, while I haven't gotten like the actual real life creden credentials, I always say it wrong, credentials of these places, there might be some that are really good and that you can check out and enjoy. Um, just make sure you do a little bit of digging and investigation before you check them out. I did talk about one in my unedited video, um, but... While they did have background information in their cards, I just wasn't quite sure how to promote them without it being, uh, like, I, I didn't have the information to make sure it was legitimate, and they could be, but I didn't want to promise you guys that and it be a false claim. <laughs> well, they are wonderful, though, so if you do check them out, that's awesome, but I don't want to promote something that I'm not 100% sure in. <laughs> That's just my honest thought, even though all of them have been wonderful people to me. Anyways, going on. <laughs> me and my tangents, right? Um, it's it's really important to try to figure out uh, pacing yourself in Second Life, figuring your, out your priorities, maybe even limiting how often you're on. And a big thing that helped with that is my medication. Uh, seeing a doctor and sort of taking a step back. I think I log in maybe an hour, maybe sometimes two, like these vlogs, and maybe that's like once or twice a week, if that, when it used to be almost daily and all day and even mobile and at night, like I'd be up till 3 a.m. still texting when I should have been focusing on my relationship or myself or my family or seeing my friends more. I mean... I do actually have friends outside of here. I had a job for a while outside of here. I now still make bath bombs. There's so much more I could do than just sit and talk to a computer. And again, if you are doing this and you have 
wonderful lives out of this, if you are happy, if everything is going amazing for you, then I am so happy for you. I'm so proud of you, and I think you are doing amazing. If you are working towards these goals, again, you are amazing, and I support it so much. Even if you aren't, I motivate you to try and do these things, and either way, I do respect you and love you so much, and I think things could be amazing if you just give it a little shot. <laughs> You're still beautiful and wonderful and worth that effort, I promise. Um, I did also want to talk about the relationships in Second Life. I will eventually be doing a video on how to handle long-distance relationships, passive aggression, fights, and everything, but I wanted to still at least talk about it a little bit here and maybe just give a quick summary of it. Second Life, again, can be extremely intense with friendships, and it's good to take a step back sometimes before you reply, especially if it's just through text. Just maybe write a quick AFK and walk away <laughs> if something bad happens or if you're in a fight or if some drama is going on. Take a step back. Go do something around the house. Breathe or just even log off for a little bit. Calm down. Because sometimes we'll say things that we regret and you don't ever want to lose a friendship or be banned from a sim or have something you regret happen because... An emotional rise happened. <laughs> I know I'm guilty of that too. And with my medication, it's helped me kind of realize and take a step back of everything that's happened. And while I'm not completely guilty for it all, I think sometimes it's just all of the parties in general that you know, just kind of need to reevaluate, need to take a step back and just not rush forward with emotions. And that happens so much with Second Life, with relationships and friendships, everything. So it's it's good to pace yourself. It's good for you to kind of step back, see if this is a legitimate relationship or friendship or fight, how much it matters. It's You want to, if it really matters to you, then you should take the time to focus on yourself and breathe. <laughs> and... With mental issues in Second Life, I know I keep going on tangents. <laughs> I think that's my medication talking, a little manic. Um, it's it's very important to find other ways to cope. My ways to cope are working on bath bombs, crocheting, cleaning around my house, or exercising. It really helps with me trying to clear my head, with trying to breathe, with... Um, finding things that work for me. It might not work for you, so figure out what works for you. Um, but it helps with dealing with anxiety, dealing with pressure. Whenever you feel burnt out, it's good just to take a break. It's second life. People will be understanding if you need to step back and breathe. And if they aren't, then maybe it wasn't worth it. <laughs> um... I think that's it for now. I don't think I really covered everything I wanted to, but hopefully in the second part I can get to that as well. It's been hard for me not to talk every single thing about what I've done as well. Um, if you ever want to check out BetterHelp, check it down in the description below. I'll make sure to leave links. Uh, New World Notes will also be covering several things in the description below as well. Um, if you ever have any questions, leave a comment in the description below. I would love to know how you cope. I would love to know any questions you have, any future videos you might like, or if I said anything that you want to have more discussions on or more videos on, just let me know. I'm always really happy to do it. I'll be posting more than just Fridays from now on. My Friday videos will be the ones that are with New World Notes, but otherwise I'll be doing more videos in general, hopefully um, just after my workouts and stuff, so it'll be evening videos. Um, thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.